G'day punters, welcome to a massive edition of the Mailbag Preview Show this week. We've got our spring panel um, formed for the first time. I'm back in the host seat after a week's hiatus and you guys would have seen the lovely faces of Shane, Gabby and Jack last week on a shortened edition of the show. But we're back bigger than ever this week and this is our awesome foursome for the spring carnival. And I'll just go around the team. Um, You've gotten very, very good at this, haven't you? Like from where you started from, was it two a month and a half ago? Yeah, when I like couldn't Look sleep. At you go I now. couldn't sleep the night before and now. Oh, absolutely, everyone. As always, guys, we are sponsored by punningform.com.au. All the data the guys will talk to today is the punning form data. And of also baggybet.com. If you aren't a member, become a member today and download the app and join in all the fun over at baggybet.com. Shane, how's your week been, mate? Uh, it's been good. Um, God bless um, Ducky Chujo and Noriyuka Masuda and Barma Hut winning the last at uh, Doombin on Wednesday. Glorious. Jeez, that it was, was a glorious. Grim, it was a grim day for you before that, wasn't it? Yeah, I just like, I don't know how highlights got beat. Uh, and then another couple of minor placings. And yeah, I was like, I was on edge, got to be honest. Um, but anyway. You're only as good as your last bet, James. And mine was, was that- a $22 winner, and I'm feeling good about myself. Last time Field of Roses went round, you were in a hole too, and you rage bet it then. Did you rage bet it yesterday? I did. I did. Thanks, Jack. And Jack, you're looking particularly good yourself today. It looks like you and Jules Valance have been to the same tanning salon. <laughs> have a look at the fake tan you've got on your face. Oh, come off it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, nothing like a rage bet at a, tw- at a, at a big price. But um, anyway, there's uh, racing against. Uh, Saturday, James, so I've got to straighten myself up and get ready for that massive day. Um, I've got Gatton and Dolby at the same time. It's like heaven. Massive day, massive weekend. And Gabby, welcome to you. How are you going? How's the week been? Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. It's been a good week. Um, Had a couple of bets, actually. Had one today. Just just the one winner, which is, uh, what have we got? Queen of the Green. Uh, and uh, it's a great omen for the week, wasn't it? And uh, well, hopefully, hopefully, well, well, I have to. Hopefully, you uh, oh, yeah, bet she got as well. What was that? Jack, well, we did that. Shane and Gabby coming off winners. Unfortunately, my last bet wasn't a winner. How was yours, Jack? Uh, I lost money yesterday, but I was very close to glory. If uh, I could have better placed, it would have been a fill just for the, the place, place all up for our two runners yesterday. Uh, sand down on God's carpet. I got it like I could tell Shane Rage bet from his response to Craig's ride post race. I thought what he did was beautiful, and most importantly, like he came out and just sort of sat us down, like you know, like Wayne Carey is coming out three quarter time. No one's talking except Craig. Listen up, this is what's happening. This is what I'm going to do. This is how your horse likes to be ridden. This is what it's done the last three starts. This is what these three have done the last three starts. This is how this race is going to run. This is where I want to be in run. This is where I'm going to get to in the straight and did everything to the T. Um, and full credit to John Allen too. He was straight up, did exactly what we asked. Um, it was cool. Craig's uh, an operator and we look forward to having him ride Keats on Sunday at Flemington at headquarters. So he is hopefully right. so Keats can a, maintain the a- momentum. That's as good a segue as ever to go into our mailbag bloodstock um, segment. And the boys uh, behind the bloodstock team are airborne at the moment. I think the last few weeks, I, I thank everybody for putting their hands in their pockets. Everything we buy at the moment is sort of selling like hotcakes. So we do have one for you today. We'll, we'll bring up the picture of our headwater uh, by Claws are out, Philly. Um, Shane and Jack um, purchased her last week. Yes, last week it was up there at the sale. Um, tell us a bit about it, boys. I think this will be the only time, Shane, we ever, well, until we get a little bit further down the line, maybe three or four, five, maybe 10 years, that we actually purchased the best filly in a sale. Yeah, legitimately can say that. Um, I'll just quickly touch on the uniqueness of this sale, James, um, for those playing along at home. These horses were purchased at the June national sale, Magic Means national sale, which Jack and I attended and took home a Maurice Colt and an Autumn Sun. Philly. Um, so we've seen this, we've seen the headwater previously. So these horses that went through at this sale were all purchased at that sale, went straight to a paddock, weren't touched. Uh, the bloke that brought them had a medical episode at the time that he was bidding and they all had to go back through the sales ring. So these were no not prepped, no shoes, 
you know, warts and all. You know, there was what you see is what you get. Um, and I can categorically say that this was the only horse that had improved from sale time to, to turning up. It's like a natural doer. Um, and the rest were like bow-legged, turned in, rough, terrible walkers. It was just a complete standout. Yeah, we, we've got a re it, ticked every box from the vet completely safe that end. Uh, best walker, best type by a mile. And uh, using a uh, young guy on Twitter stuff um, in the UK, it rates really, really highly on the uh, pedigree and the biometric stuff. We were actually the underbidder on this horse in June as well. So we saved a ton of money and and plus the spelling fees <laughs> like since yeah. June. So it's a huge, like it's a complete fill. And uh, really looking forward to, to racing her. We're going to break her in, Shane, at the Hinterland Thoroughbreds, which we were lucky enough to get a tour of on the Wednesday. And from there, with their feedback from, is it Sarah, who runs, yep. the, runs the farm there, we're going to decide from that point with the, with the new ownership group where we take the filly. So we're going to try something different this time. I'm not going to nominate a trainer off the bat. We're going to sell her ourselves and then take on the feedback from Sarah and take that to the ownership group and make a decision as a team as to where we send her. She's going to be paid up for bobs, we think. Uh, but other than that, that, it's going to be up to the to the guys and girls who get involved in this horse. So if you want to get involved, email jono at themailbag.com.au, J-O-N-O at themailbag.com.au. And get involved. Send him an email. Shares from, you know, 1,043, I think, to the 2.5%. So, again, not breaking the bank. Outstanding value. Um, very well bred up. So if you want to have a bit of fun with the guys, which plenty of our owners are doing, um, Fields of, Road, Fields of Roses, I Could Do Better, Keats first up, who's running at Flemington on Sunday. Get involved, Jono, at themailbag.com.au. That's our mailbag bloodstock section for this week. Now let's move on to Talking Ponies. We've got a massive card at Caulfield. We're going to run five races today, so we've got a big jump. Uh, no runner by runner, but we'll run through the, the five group races on the card. Now, it is a rail out six metres tyre, currently soft five, but a bit of a few showers around Melbourne the next couple of days. So very interesting to see how the track comes up. Um, you can imagine what sort of head noise that's creating for our man Jackson Oldham, who's a Jane Bunn subscriber. Fascinating. What an operator. She could be in the racing industry, couldn't you? Like she's giving out that on the news and also selling it as a product. Full credit to her and Jackson's a sub. So uh, no idea how this track will end up because we don't know how much rain we're going to get. It's Victoria. It comes in waves and it comes in like random spots. So I'm sort of operating on a sort of soft six track, uh, reasonably fair, core field. It rails out six, right? You don't want to be worse in midfield as a rule, but you can be. You don't want to be, but you can be. And I think young Jackson's holding a, a nice futures ticket on I Wish I Win. So I think he's hoping for a bit of rain and a couple of those connections in the Rupert Clark to uh, not take their place. We will chat Rupert Clark um, a little bit later in the show, but we will kick off with race four. It's the Caulfield Guineas preview. We've got a market up there um, with the, the heavily favoured, although on the drift, uh, aft cabin at $2.40. Well, what we'll do, we'll, we'll move into a replay of Aft Cabin um, <clears throat> in the in the McNeil Stakes. Sorry, I should stay from a couple of weeks ago. We'll see Aft Cabin here. He was fourteen hundred back to twelve hundred this this day. Now stepping back out to the fourteen hundred of the Warfield Guineas preview. Mm-hmm. Um, Jack, how's he going to go? Play grey up. Uh, the 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 decision to go back and trip and up and trips just confusing. Uh, they declared on the radio this morning. Uh, but you know, he's in Sydney. What would he really know? Um, I, I hate the Sandown form as a rule. I always avoid it. Um, I think it's overrated. I think the two horses with like proper scope here are uh, Meridius and Amenable. It's really hard to line up Japanese Emperor. Uh, I think it's going to be back and buried and J. Carl handle J. Mott. I'd like to be on it, Japanese Emperor, but really concern the map. And with the rain coming, it's no need to rush. And even Sir Juggernaut was like, it couldn't win where it was at Mooney Valley the other day and was home pretty well. So um, I think it's wide open. I'd be dodging after cabin. I want to see it do something in a proper race first. Like it just put away poor horses at Sandown and failed last night at Caulfield. So you're trusting the SP and you're trusting the hype, I think, if you want to step into it. And then there's um, Sir, 
So Chris Wallace horse here, Shane, what do you want to do with it? Yeah, I'll, I'll and will he be in Australia to handle its <laughs> yeah, preparation? Due to, due is he to, flying first class over to London? Due to, no, Chris has put out a, 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 of course, he put out a press release just before <laughs> we went on air, Jack. Uh, <laughs> and he put it out on Twitter and he tagged Elbo. Um, as in <laughs> Prime Minister, Mr. Albanese, he tagged him dead set. Um, the the Kiwi representing Australia at the Queen's funeral can't make it uh, be, due, due to COVID complications. So I hope all is well with Chris. Oh, uh, what are we saying there? Well, I thought he might have been an anti-vaxxer, but then realised he was at Royal <laughs> Ascot with Nature Stripe. So, uh, <laughs> so it can't be that, can it? I was hoping it was. I was really upset with myself when I realised it. Probably wouldn't be that. But Chris has Ossipenko, a Piero Colt out of Raskova, who has had one other horse to race, which we tried to buy. Uh, the slowest horse in history, Zukovsky. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, owned, by a, a, owned by someone, a couple out in Western Queensland uh, that races horses around the Darling Downs, and unfortunately they knew that Ossipenko uh, had the ability to, um, before we try to get under their neck and steal it off them, so um, I think it. I think it's the right horse. Um, Mr. C. J. Waller is the managing owner to this horse. Thought that Kibu form uh, is the right form. Um, said it, it, this couldn't win against Kibu when it met it last time over when it stepped to fourteen hundred. Who's gone uh, on to, to to post benchmark figures whilst winning? So the form is Sydney form and it's proper form. Proper form. Um, look. I'm not going to say I'm not going to tip it or, or back it early or anything like that. What I'm saying is, if this thing drifts, it's not winning today, but it's definitely going to be a player as it gets up in trip. So let the market determine. It's got gate one. It's got a great opportunity just to just to have a warm up run uh, from the gate and the map. But I think it's a serious. I think it's a serious player in these three year old features as we get further into the spring. I'm just not sure whether Saturday's its day. Aft cabin, not as concerned about the distance change, showed good ability, and then they've looked at the calendar and said, right, we've got to back off this horse, drop him in trip, and then rebuild his program to aim at a guineas. And I think we'll – like he'll – he'll what he does this week is where, he's, is where he sits in the pecking order. He's not here for a warm-up run. He's here to yeah. play. So I'd expect those two to, to one way or another to, to be right in the finish, but – Really interested in Austin Panko as a horse going forward. And Gabby, you happy to be with the $2.40 of AF Cabin or are you looking at it a different way? Yeah, no, definitely too short for me. Um, as usual, I try to steer clear of them. Sort of in these big races, $2.25 is just far too short for me. Austin Panko, I would have liked to see it do just slightly a little bit more in its in its trials. So as as Shane said, it's going to progress well but I think four dollars here for me is also too short but I'm probably going to just stick with Japanese Emperor I think as um Jack said like worried about how the track's going to play out but I really liked his win uh first up at Sandown so he's going to appreciate the 1400 and I think at ten dollars that's that's a far happier place for me to look than two dollars 25. And for, for all you we know like come on it might even improve on a better track. That was a heavy nine at Sandown, in the middle of winter, or the end of winter. Like that's a like that that track's full of fill. Yeah, it's a really like worn out track. So it yeah, should a fresh get, core field yeah. here. Soft. It should have really liked the soft. So yeah, and Meredith is there as well. But yeah, I'd I'd be um having a bet each way, Japanese Emperor. And one that you haven't, none of you spoke about, one that I'm pretty keen on, amenable. I think very much like Osipenko is. I, I think from the barrier. Obviously, Saturday isn't going to be his grand final, but I could entertain and play it at fifteen dollars, and you'll see a bit of a you'll see a bit of a flary bet from uh, me a bit later on with amenable. I, oh, I thought it, it was close to the run of the race in the lead up race. I agree. I just worry where it gets to in the run here. I think the the, the barrier is a bit off putting. I think the barrier, the worry, and there's not that much speed in the race, is there? So mm-hmm. yeah, I think he could be um, just having a run around, and I'll be looking for him to hit the line um, hard, stepping up to sixteen hundred of the guineas in a few weeks' time. That's the guineas prelude for the boys. We'll move on to race five and preview the thousand guineas prelude. 
And we've got a very, very wide open affair here. We've got uh, the, the the Kiwi um, sitting sort of 550, top of the market there. She's lickety split. Uh, a couple others in the market, uh, Boogie Dancer, Miss Hellfire, Russian Conquest, um, Revolutionary, Revolutionary Miss coming out of the Boogie Dancer race. Um, we'll have a look at the we'll have a look at the speed map first. And Jack Torkus, what's going to pan out on Saturday here? Well, but to be honest, I've got no idea. I think Foxy Gold goes forward, Prasimi and Arch rolls forward. I think Celestial Spirit from that good draw will kick up and hold a spot. Uh could even leads go Waterhouse, Miss Hellfire thereabouts, Russian Conquest will roll forward. I've got She's Lickety Split. Forward but wide. Boogie dance at cast. Hope at hand. Cast. Mumbai Jewel. Call sign Charlie. Need to go back. Revolutionary Miss, who I like here but hate the map, has to go back. And then the Sumatra Love Nest and Vagrant. I think Bon Her and Denied will sneak up and get little nice runs, but they might get sort of flushed out the back of the surf as they straighten. Um, the map is really tricky, and I, the, the only thing that's harder than this map is this race for me. Gab? Yeah, so a nice little race here. Um, I do love a New Zealander coming over. To Queensland, uh, sorry, not Queensland, Australia. Um, first up, so she, she's going to go really well. But I'm going to go with Prosenium Arch here. I've followed this horse her whole prep, and I've really, really liked her. And yeah, so last start, a good, good third. Um, I thought she she battled on really, really well. Sorry about these dogs. Um, oh. Yeah, for third there and. You know, she's she sort of when you watch her race, like she she gets under the pump sort of on the turn, but then she just keeps whacking away. And I've noticed they have put blinkers on her there Saturday. So I'm really, really excited to see her with the blinkers on. Um, I think it could, who knows, fire up a bit or yeah, I, I just being two horses come out of that race gap, they've both won, and you're gonna get a great run. Yeah. I like where your head's at. She's gonna she's a gonna lot. lead or or be thereabouts and and, um, yeah, I just thought the $13, she definitely didn't lose me as a follower after last start. And I think she's a really progressive type. Whether it's, you know, whether it is this prep, I think as a, a really nice so you think, Billy, gee, she's going to go on in her future. Um, no knock, obviously, um, you know, we've got Boogie Dance, Boogie Dancer, sorry. I just think last run, obviously, it was just such a fast run race and she was just off her feet the entire the entire race. So I think we could see a, a, and a good run from her and Russian conquest is there as well. But yeah, I'm with uh, I'm with the ten happily. Jane, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, look, I just um, I'm not a big SP profile operator, um, you know, in my own patch. Um, but I did sort of refer to the SP of she's lickety split and and just trying to line that up. Obviously. Um, you know, if you look through its career, five dollars, eleven dollars in a group one uh, that it won, uh, seven dollars thirty in a, in another group one, five dollars twenty. Like I was thinking when I first looked at this race, this thing might just kill them because I can punch holes in everything. Um, you know, horses that have had, you know, decent, decent, you know, two year old preparations. You know, Magic Millions, Blue Diamonds, Russian Conquest, uh, Revolutionary Miss. You know, are they going to get? Are they going to appreciate going to fourteen hundred? Um, was a question mark. And then the only really other horse that I found that you know I sort of wanted to entertain was exactly for the same reasons that Gabby mentioned about Presidium Arch. Looks like a, a, a filly that'll get, um, you know, that'll run a strong trip on speed and gets the added blinkers, which could easily smooth out that flat spot that it looked like it might have been hitting at times in its race. Um, yeah, really difficult one to line up. I think the market again here will tell us what the big boys think about she's lickety split late on Betfair yep. for sure. Uh, could just come, just could just come out and kill them. Uh, wouldn't shock me at all. Um, I think, I think the, she might come in a bit, maybe. Like it's at the perfect price for the market to decide something properly. Market's got to decide. It can't. Yeah, it can't start. It could start three bucks from five dollars, yeah. or it could start tens. And, you know, and then otherwise you sort of look through the rest of the field and say you're happy to be on Presenium Arts for all the reasons that Gab said and you're getting $13 each way. That's uh, that's where I'm sort of at with that with this race. And then the track's going to, you know, track patterns should well have emerged by then as well. So I think we'll see a – we're going to see a different market come jumps on for sure. 
I think that look- she's lickety split, suited by D lane, wide draw, awkward map. Yeah. He can sit on a horse's three wide, no cover, better than anyone in Victoria. Um, I, I thought Revolutionary Miss is going to run a race, but it'll drift because of the, the, the gate and the map. So if you want to back it away, I think it'll hit the line. Um, and I actually am 100% with Gab. I think Prasimian Arch is the bet each way. Uh, it's bomb proof. The form, it's two from two. Everything, the two horses that come out of that race have won, which is a huge tick. It's got the figures to be competitive. It's got the softest map of all time. D Moore is a very, very calculated and, and thoughtful rider. Um, you know, you're going to get the, the really gun ride from him in that situation. I, I think it's the bomb proof bet each way. But like, like Shane said, if I was heavily investing in this race, I'd be really closely watching. See, she's look at his split and sort of happy to take sort of four fifty a fair late if they start steaming. Well, it sounds like we've got a bit of a consensus bet between the three yeah. of you on today's show. Um, Maybe we should have some sort of like team betting thing. And yeah. I don't know, thinking on the run here, but we need to and, we need to have uh, something going for Simi and Arch each way. I think as a group, Simi and Arch each way as a group at, at the thirteen dollars um, sounds like the, the the way to play the race there, punters. Right, and, but I don't know if are we allowed to baggy bet. We'll have a, like a, a bet for the team, and that money could go to charity or it could, could go to the Christmas party. We'll decide that as we get going. But um, that's what we'll, we'll do. Let the lawyers decide that one. Yeah, we'll let the lawyers <laughs> allegedly, potentially, not definitely uh, gamble responsibly. <laughs> Always. Uh, all righty, we'll move on from the 1,000 in, in his prelude and we'll move on to the old naturalism, I think it is. Very interesting race. We've got the, the top of the market there, Gold Trip. Willie won't he run? He's still in the market up in Sydney. Um, they haven't decided where he's running, obviously. Are too busy uh, doing their video. See them all today? Shane sent it through before. Unbelievable stuff. Oh, truly unbelievable. Fascinating. Shane, what did you, you think of that video? Just quickly. Like. What, did you, what was your first take? And now what do you think now? My first take was, would I be swallowing cyanide or jumping off the Q1 if oh. I was involved in that building? That was the first thing that popped in my head. Because <laughs> uh, that is a real, like a real, like a real racing bubble advertisement. Yeah. Um, like it's a bubble within a bubble within a dumpster fire within a train crash type <laughs> um, video, that one. Um, Have you seen it, Gab? We'll put the link in the we'll put the link in the comments. I'm um, looking forward to it. Inglis <laughs> uh, announced their Everest slot holder via video today. Um, but they must. They have yeah. to. They have to back it up with the like the re-release in a week's time to keep building momentum. This is what I'll do if I were you. That the outtakes version of because that'll be that will be popular. Yeah, the outtakes will be better. It's a little bit like mine and Jack's game of golf last week. Although I don't think I left anything off the table. <laughs> With my behaviour, I am the king of cringe videos. I shouldn't, I shouldn't criticise others. Um, anyway, let's go have a look at race. Seen that, James, you have seen seen the video of Shane. Get over to the Marban Twitter account and, and have yourself a laugh because mm. it's absolutely uh, great viewing. So get over there and, ha- and, and have yourself a laugh. <laughs> Should have heard him abusing Lindsay too. Like, <laughs> like he was pulling his weight. It was unbelievable. Mm. All right, we'll head back to the market here for the naturalism. Um, so we've spoken about Gold Trip, Willie Iwoni run. Um, Uncle Brin tops the market after a second last start at $4.80. And em- Emissary, after a very impressive win um, at Caulfield a couple of weeks ago, over $1,700, is $6. We will have a look at the speed map now, Jack. Um, what's it? Think- <laughs> I think Grand Promenade rolls forward. Earlswood has to from 14. The Amazonian gets a gun run from forward. Emissary thereabouts. Don't know what they do with Elephant. I think it'll improve, though. Smoking Romans and Shiraz. Wide draws. Shiraz is a complete grey up for Matt Punters. It's C. Wall- Waller, wide draw, wants to go back. But it's also D. Oliver wants to win. So does he go forward? Don't know. Uh, I think Uncle Bryn's cast. I think he's going to get back and buried and will be top odds it for a while. Uh, Luna Flair, Shapata. I think Gold Trip goes back. That I've only seen it once, really. So, yeah. tr- again, tricky to map. Um, Midnight Blue and Crystal Pegasus, second half of the field. We'll have a look at Emissary's last start win at Caulfield now. It was pretty impressive. I mean, coming up against <laughs> the harder field today, but he does look the, the progressive type, which you're looking for sort of this spring. Um, and I know they've got high hopes of getting into a Caulfield Cup. Um, Shane, what do you think of, of, of this race here? And also, 
one I wanted to bring up is Earlswood. Very interesting runner, um, trained by Matty Raymond there. It was very disappointing a couple of weeks ago. Um, you're getting 16 in the market. Um, how can he go? Yeah, I listened to a, um, an interview um, that Matty did, and she thought she might have been a bit of trainer error there. Um, so uh, expecting a big improvement from the horse. Obviously, that's before she knew it drew 14. Um, but it, it's a go-forward type anyway. So, yeah, look, I don't know. Like, this is a a, a real – hate using grey up because it's it reflects my current hairstyle. Um, but Gold Trip needs to be coming down here and needs to be pissing in, and that's just the bottom line of this race. Like, because these aren't – like, yeah. there's no Cox Plate winners here. And, you know, and I know part owners of this horse have backed this horse to win the Cox Plate as well as everything else. And, <laughs> and I'll, I'll be staying with one of the part owners during the Cox Plate Carnival, and I really want this horse to win Saturday so it gets to the Cox Plate. <laughs> Save you some money. <laughs> <laughs> then I won't have to pay for anything. Um, look, this horse, this horse came here to win a race like the Cox Plate. It's been up and down, unfit, vetted, not vetted, can't race in Vic, can race in Sydney, yeah. trialled in Albury. It's like it's been the most unlucky horse of all time. And to do what it did first up when you know clearly was a trial, was a great run. Yeah. Um and as well. You know, as well. Yeah. I, I like it's just it's like this is its race for me. This is the race where it has to say, like. If it turns up, it wins. Simple as that. And you know how I'll know? Because the market will tell me like This mm-hmm. camp, this trip, Zara on, winning its way into a, into a, into Cox play contention. The market will tell me if this is winning late. <laughs> and Gabby, are you looking at it the same way, or you you seeing it differently to the boys? I think no. As Shane said, I think Gold Trip really needs to be winning this if if they've got the big grand plans for him and. After last run, I, I definitely think he, he is. He should be. I think it was good. He can carry the weight, you know, out in distance here. Um, I actually didn't mind. Now this guy's got not a lot of followers, but he's got me, and that's true. Parter. I thought he was. Uh, he's come back really well this prep, and got held up there in this in the straight last start behind behind um, emissary. So. I thought he might he could run a cheeky race. I wish it was at Flemington, but um, yeah, I thought just the place. But yeah, I think if I was having a bet, um, I'd be on Gold Trip to win. Uh, I I think you have to risk him. Like he's done nothing. He's back back and buried. Just because they paid a ton for him and he was favoured in a Cox Plate, he would have got killed by Animo. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed. What about state of rest? Well, and state of rest too. Um, <laughs> Retired now. How that anyway? Um, I'm happy to risk him till he shows me he's any good. There's no form out of that Sydney race. It was a barrow troll, I agree. But um, I think he creates a great betting opportunity in this race for anything that you like. I think Grand Promenade, which would just be amazing, you know, if he could knock it off. Because imagine like the internal at the stable, that just that make me laugh. No. I mean, it's, yeah, they both offer a little bit of a gap between runs, which is perfect for Kieran Ma Davu Stayers. They're more profitable that way than if they back up quickly, which is the alternate to most stables. Uh, I, I think Grand Promenade likes Caulfield. It doesn't make it. It's just a st- solid, strong horse that makes the same like. We know what we're getting, whereas I don't know what I'm getting in Gold Trip. All I'm getting, all I'm feeling is and seeing is hype. Uh, I think Shiraz is what run a race. I think it can win. I'll back both of them. I'll have something on um, um, Stand By. Hmm. Something on... The Amazonian is going to get a gun run and was very, very good at Caulfield. I'll be risking um, Luna Flair. I think it's flying, but keen to have something on Grand Promenade, Shiraz and the Amazonian, and I won't be losing on Ellswood, who has that good SP in a, in the, in a good race to be in. They ran an okay time. Um, she can train. This horse loves Caulfield. We know it loves Caulfield. It could bounce right back, and you'll be thinking, why was it such a big price? It's failed yeah. once, just one failure, and now it's been just discarded. So it sounds like you're heavily against the two favourites and, and obviously hoping that Gold Trip does get the start down here in Melbourne to, to keep those juicy prices of a few of them you've spoken about. Now over a if, it, if, it's, if it's steams, right, where I'm, I know I'm dead, like Shane said, 
Yeah. Like it'll it'll be like it'll be like a cox plate where they just come for this horse. No one's like no one like was ever heard of, and it just runs through a brick wall and wins. Mm-hmm. Right? Happens like, all the time. Happens Uncle the time. Uncle Brian, I know what I'm getting, and it's not very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a nonny who starts way shorter than it should every every start. And last start was given a great ride and couldn't win. It was, it was on pace suited many Valley, but that was a staying race. That's different. It's now drawn one. You've got to either dig this horse up, who's going well but not winning, or you ride it in a rhythm and you back and bury it. Back and bury it at Caulfield, 800 metres plus, is, is no, no good. Very bad. Avoid. That sounds like course. if you are keen, Uncle Brian, head over to valuebet.com. It sounds like chat. Oh, big time. Uh, we'll, we'll be the biggest. We will be the biggest price, Uncle Brin, until I get told I have to stop. And you are all cashed up after Jack took on Snap Dancer and cleaned him out. So if you are keen, reinvest some of that Snap Dancer. Uh, come the on. Then I, talk on then I talk on Colin Gatter, got, the, got it back a bit, but then I talk on Arm Thunderstrike. So, yeah. yeah. I'm, you are two from three versus me. So <laughs> let's go. No, very interesting race. Very interesting to see where Gold Trip comes. Um, some differing, differing thoughts from the team there. And I think what I'm taking from that, if Gold Strip, Gold Trip is here in Melbourne ready It'll to be a strip. And there's a bit of money late, it will be a strip and, and just get on. Um, that's the naturalism. We'll move on to the, the group one of the day, the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes, over 1,400 metres. Um, so we've got Darlison, $26 coming from a, a tight victory over there in Adelaide. Um, I am Superman. He's probably one of the ones that if he does rain, he will or, or does stay in that soft range, will probably be one of the ones that come out and give I wish I win the chance to, to make the field. Ayrton, um, who is $6, showmanship $7 off a, off a win there in Sydney. We've also got Tuvalu, $5.50, Dragon Leap, very interesting runner at $7. And the emergency there that everybody's talking about, the next big thing, um, into $3.20, I wish I win, but we're not 100% sure if he gets in the field or not yet. We'll have a look at the speed map for the 1,400-metre group one at Caulfield. Um, yeah, very interesting. Obviously, a big field, so um, big map there. Jack, what's it doing? Oh, I, like, this is embarrassing. I've got no idea. Like, it's chaos. It's absolute chaos, and the best horse in the race, the market's telling you, you don't even know if it's running. Oh, there's a lot of speed. There'll be a lot of tactics. This is a really tricky tactical distance at Caulfield. It's a 400 meter shoot. They jump and they start turning really quickly. So like, these riders are going to make a decision within 20 meters what they're doing. And if enough of them say they're going forward, then it's going to be like suicidal. And if enough of them say they're going back, it's going to be they're going to be 10 wide while they like shuffle into positions. By the time they get into their positions, they'll be taken off again. It's chaos. I think if you want to bet early, you ha- if you haven't already backed, wish I, I wish I win in in the pre-post, and good luck to you if you have. It seems uh, like everybody in the world is, except for for us in here, though. <laughs> yeah. I hope it doesn't get a run. The the map horse with the the safest sort of setup here, you know, loves Caulfield's Ayrton. But outside of that, if I wish I win runs, it's going to be fascinating. I wanted to find Graceful Girl, but Barrier One, worse than midfield, no. Um, I, I like Shalot, but it's got no pace here and Caulfield 400 metres. It's going to have to be very, very good and potentially run over top of good horses. Um, it's just scary. Before yeah. I throw to the others, we'll have a look at a couple of replays. So we do have the Memsey Stakes from um, a couple of weekends ago. And so you've got Dragon Leap, as I mentioned before, very interesting runner and, and call sign Mav who... Uh, Sitting second there, I think he is behind Snap Dancer. I think yeah, Jack, Jack, horse. Jack still uh, has, has shivers watching this. Um, but Dragon Leap, Shane, has is he, is he got any chance? He's pretty hard in the market at seven dollars. Yeah, I give it. I like, give it a good chance. Um, thought it ran okay there. Um, obviously, we'll come on a little bit, but it gets Mick D in gate fifteen, which is not like it doesn't excite me a lot. Um, nor should it. You know, look, like it's yeah, it's hard to get enthusiastic. It shouldn't excite you. It shouldn't scare you. Um, it should intimidate you. Look, there's take. So if we, if I'm looking at this race and take out the emergence, James, we can talk about what I think. Absolutely, where I'm going. So I'm taking away the emergencies and looking at this race, and um, like I just want to be on it. It's the only horse in the race I want to be on. I can go through every single horse and say, well, they can't win. 
quite easily because they're not much good. Um, two for lose like third emergency off some reasonable, you know, uh, Flemington winter figures, which are always reasonable figures, um, you know, in that grade when you're winning like it is. Got a, Queensland, a, Queensland forms as good as it gets at the moment. And, and Ayrton gets the greatest jockey upgrade of all time from Jamie Carter D Lane. Now, I know that horse drew 15 in the Stradbroke and, you know, just sat at four deep there and still had the audacity to run up with alligator blood and got tied late, which he was entitled to. Last prep of Ayrton, I would say, was the biggest slaughter training performance I've ever yep. seen of a quality racehorse like Ayrton. Its win at uh, Caulfield was excellent. I think Mick made the comment that the horse wasn't quite fit enough when we'd done a deep dive on that race with Pistol and Jackson, it actually showed incremental sectionals from the 600 through to the finish, which suggested to us that the horse like wasn't tiring late because it was fitness. It was actually powering through the line. And and this horse is in for a, a massive Queensland winter carnival. That was 1,400 Caulfield uh, on a good track, a good three track, I think, in a group three, on a good three. And then went and ran Vizaki, over 1,800 on a heavy 10 at the Gold Coast in the Hollander. Hugh Bowman gassed it, sent it outside the lead. It got beat 13. And like, there's, not, there's no coming back from that. And then it draws 15 in the Stradbroke and sits four wide and gets beat four lengths in, you know, in a group one in Queensland, which is superior form uh, this spring so far, behind Alligator Blood who should have beaten on Thunderstruck last start. Which is the grouse form in Victoria, the, the race form. we just showed. The race we just showed is the grouse form at the moment, and you can yep. tie it through that for sure. So all is well that ends well with Ayrton um, finally breaking through in a big race on Saturday. And there's another replay that I think we should have a look at, um, showmanship up in Sydney now. Obviously, we all know that uh, Uncle Bob's taken all his horses and put them on a plane home and only left this one and another one, I think. So it must be going They're both okay. in this race. They're both in this must, race. Must be going okay if he's if he's left it here. But what, what I like about this was um, he, he's, he's better on top of the ground. This was a soft five that day. But have a look at him here. He just pins his ears back, um, really wants to win, gets, uh, gets over the top there up in Sydney. Gad, what do you think of the chances of showmanship? I actually really like showmanship, to be honest. I was gonna gonna mention him because I don't think he had a mention there before. But yeah, really competitive type and gets through the ground. So if we are looking at, you know, a soft to heavy, which I'm not sure. I know it is raining a bit more there. Um, then I think he's a great great chance, you know. And Prime candidate came out and went really well last week. Uh, yeah, beaten by Kiku. Yes. Yeah, but like, yeah, like good for. And um, I am Superman, worried about the ground, um, but I really, really rate him. I just thought, great, great second there behind Mr. Brightside, and you're getting them priced there, $23, which is also something that uh, takes a lot of my attention. Um, Dragon Leap as well, uh, what's it going to do? Not sure. Is it going to be four wide, potentially? And, yeah, no, I definitely think uh, for me showmanship, and I'm not actually sure if I'm going to have a bet yet. I say that, and I definitely yeah. will, but <laughs> <laughs> on Thursday. <laughs> well, my problem with showmanship is, like, Danio's negative 33.6% pot, his last 100, that's with showmanship winning that race. Yeah. So, like, in Victoria, it's even more cancerous. Yeah. There's two ways to take that. Either yeah. he's completely off and you must avoid it at all costs, or he's going to revert to the norm soon. And you want to ride that wave as it builds. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to avoid it until I see a little bit of evidence. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think that the form stacks up from that horse and it gets a big – it's a big player. I, I think that the safest way to bet in this race and the way I'm going to bet is call sign map and drag and leap if it gets a run, uh, petrified of air turn. But I just want to be with the, um, the good form uh, out of that on Thunderstruck race. And so, and, we've and obviously, we've going to get a good run on speed, I think. We've obviously, like Shane, sort of dismissed if the emergencies do get in. But if he does get in, this favourite here is is the boom correct on him. I mean, every bloody man is telling you about him. Everyone on Twitter is on him at a massive price. Um, he's into $3.20 now. 
If he does get a run, he's going to start very, very short. At, at baggybet.com, Jack, are you happy to take him on if he does uh, sneak his way into the field? I haven't thought about it, to be honest, deeply. But I, I think he'll be soft. Yeah. Because of the map. That awkward gate as well. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, like half the field. but It's not like it's, a, it's fresh, fresh on the scene. It's just fresh on the scene in Australia. It's had a lot of runs. Yeah. The, the, all, the big boys will know what's happening on the other side. Well, they always do, but um, I just think with that map, like if you're on eight bucks, which most people sounds like they are, everyone is. Yeah. Full credit to you and good luck to. You. But uh, three dollars twenty in in a, in a deep race with a chaotic speed map. I've danced with the overs god at plenty of times. This doesn't get a run. <laughs> this doesn't get a run. I don't think so. And I, hope, you, I, you know, I sort of hope it does. There's a couple of blokes I know that are on it at a good price. That's but, such a lie. <laughs> yeah, but not yet. You're not on it and you don't give us two shits. No, I'm not on it. <laughs> uh, it sounds like, from the sound of you, Shane, it sounds that like you're very, very keen on, on it. And, um, on yeah, Saturday. I am. I'm completely, completely penning what happened in Queensland. As I said, um, it's pretty scathing there in my assessment. How many trainers, how many winners you train, Shane? <laughs> well, none. Um, but yeah, I, it's yeah, it's the one to beat. It's the right horse for me. I, it's, emergency is out of the equation. Best map, great jock switch. Everything I like about it is says it's a bet. Very nice. So that's our preview of the big one on Saturday, the Group 1 Sir Rupert Clark. Now, the last race we are going to have a look at is Race 8, the How Now Stakes. And we've got a very, very solid favourite um, in Chain of Lightning, um, who, before I go to the speed map, we'll just show a replay of Chain of, Light- of Lightning's last start. <clears throat> like, seriously, like, watch this thing. Just- Good. That's passive aggressive. Well, it's good horses here. That's kiss on all four cheeks. It's about to drop. Yeah, that pissed in at Flemington last week. Like, so I think that's the like big towed one itself there. around four and five wide. And that's nearly, it there, getting run eased, past. Nearly eased up on the line after that torrid run. Like mm. it's going to have to do the think, same thing on Saturday though. That's the only chink here. But so we'll have a, as so a we'll punter, I'd probably rather that than, than, than like having a different set of circumstances. So we'll have a look at the map. And, yeah, as you just mentioned, it does look a little bit sticky on, on, on how you've mapped him there, Jack. And um, it's, a thin, it's a thin race, like map-wise. Yeah. This is a lot simpler. So if it's mad on pace, I think this horse has the speed to sit closer if it wants to. I think it'll do whatever they need to do. I really do. I, I think Jamie but has I think that, keys. That, that pace is... That pace has been taken out of the race with Felicia being scratched. So it's a bit, um, yeah, not sure where that pace comes from now. Maybe Rainbeal um, comes up. Well, Lavish Girl will kick, and, kick up and hold a spot. Um, done that before and won this track and trip, I think. So uh, it's certainly going to show some speed. Zapato, Zapito, Zapatio brings some good Sydney form. It'll be there or thereabouts for sure. Uh, you have to get used to it. I can't really pronounce most of the, the ponies' names, to be honest. But uh, I, I think... I'll, I'll go first here. I think Chain of Lightning is almost a moral. It's an easy, easy bet to have. You can't knock the horse. It's gonna. It's done what it's probably got to do here map-wise and let down and travelled and cornered. I love the bet here. It's the best bet for me all day at Caulfield. Gabby, we'll throw to you. Um, are you in Shane's corner are you, you, with Chain of Lightning? I mean, after that very impressive win, I think a lot of punters will be. Are you siding with him on, on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. I think... Chain of Lightning is, yeah, I just loved the way she was just eased up that little bit after, as I said, a torrid run um, last start and she she did so well and I I have no reason why she's not going to continue that here. But I did want to make mention of She's All Class, which was probably going to be my best each way or at least place bet um, if she sort of stays at that $10 mark. Uh, I think she's really good. I think she lost a lot of followers after that beat behind um, mm. little Stevie where she ran seventh. And um, I thought, you know, I'll give her another chance last start and she she's Went good. back to um, the way she sort of used to be. But, yeah, people were very quick to for, to jump, sorry, to jump off. She started it at big odds there. So, yeah, I'm happy to be with her each way. She drops a little bit of weight. and If you go back to the start of the prep, Gab, like she's SP 460 versus Chain of Lightning. 
yeah. around second to it there as well. With with 60 kilos, that was. So that's what I'm sort of thinking. She gets 55 here. She's, um, yeah, no, I, I just, my concern is obviously like the barrier two. She, my heart breaks if she gets <laughs> like where I, I usually end up, which is jammed back on the fence at Caulfield. Yeah. Um, that's my concern. But, look, this race isn't huge. I'm hoping she can find a little out there. And, and um, yeah, I definitely think she can be competitive here. But Chain of Lightning, obviously, is the class runner and she, I'd love to have her <laughs> put it that way. And, Shane, are you making this a consensus bet or is there something that... Um, There's no way. Well, Absolutely not. Here. Absolutely not. Um, um, beaks and troughs. Nose, this nose roll uh, horse here. Like, how, how bad of a train is Sterling Osland? Um, this thing goes around at six dollars at Inverell or somewhere, didn't it? Um, before Moody got it, yeah. Uh, and I don't mean that Sterling Osland trains plenty of winners, um, around the bush, but this Ramsey Pastoral obviously very had a lot of success sending these, um, you know, these types of horses that show a bit in, in country New South Wales down to Moody once they get a nose roll on them, they improve lengths. Um, <laughs> I thought it was the kind of run where I doubt it can do it again. There you go. Um, it's got it's it's gonna have to tow itself around again. And there's two horses I want to be on to beat it. If it's wet, I want to be on written beauty. Um, this horse has got the, the ability to unleash a strong closing sectionals on a wet track. Obviously brings that um important dash of Queensland form where it won at listed level uh in really Strising sectionals on on a wet Eagle Farm track, and it was very wet that day. Uh, and then has ran well in subsequent runs um, at Eagle Farm, particularly that Group Two race behind Palazzo Pan when it went to fourteen hundred. And we know that Palazzo Pan did go and run second in a Group race in Sydney on the weekend. Uh, and then Star Tontes and Snap Dancer uh, in that Tats Tiara where it ran on well there. Uh, two trials back uh, means it's ready to go for me at 1,200. If it's wet, I think it could be a play at a price. Conversely, the big improver has to be the seven isotope yeah, who, gets the blink, who gets the blinkers back on this time. Um, comes through that chain of lightning run. It was uh, it was $6 out the six fifty back into $6, so it was solid. Uh, as I said, blinkers off. and um, Damien Lane gear change. Damien Lane, big Big tick, uh, blinkers on. Mazu, alligator blood for. I, I, it, it, it was one I was worried about. You know, I would, it wouldn't worry me if it was like, you know, good four, soft five. If, if it was like getting into the like real, like soft seven sort of heavy eight range, I don't know, I'd be that excited about it. But I think it's the big improver in the race. And like I said, I just think that this, um, this chain of lightning is like, if it does it again, like it's going to have to do it again, like it did last start, right? So it's going to have to sort of like bounce again off that pretty tough sort of win. Um, and if it does, it's you know it's you've got to say it's a proper group horse if it can do it again with that similar setup with that map again. So it's getting short. Happy to, it's happy to bet like yeah, it's yeah, another one that's really short. Like yeah, well, I'm having a look now. It's into it's gone in again. It's into 280 at baggybet.com now. So, and I think it's one of those ones that everybody's talking about. It you know, gonna, it's gonna it's gonna like anchor a lot of multis. I think it's gonna be anchoring a lot of multis. It's sort of late in the day. There'll be a lot of the a lot of money on it. Um, I think it it starts even shorter than the 280. Um, but yeah, it's sort of getting very skinny there. And I think Shane's given a couple of um couple of nice options to beat it. And I think if the rain doesn't come, one that I was happy to have a play at is Zapateo. Um, well, SP six bucks versus Eduardo. Six dollars versus Eduardo. Mm. Mm. No? Oh, yeah. That's the second best and sprinter it, in the country. It just didn't handle the the, the ground. It's a good, it's a good horse. Very good. So, and, and the start before that, um, yeah, it was a very convincing, um, dominant win. So I think, um, yeah, if that rain doesn't come, Zapatea could be one for, for me. Well, that's it from the races that we are previewing today. Let's have a look at the team's best bets for this weekend. Um, Shane, tell us your best bet, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, disclaimer, the emergencies don't get a run. Caulfield Race 7, number 8, Ayrton. 
And I did mention a little bit earlier, I had something a bit flary. I think Amenable is going to run a big race. Um, I don't think he can win on Saturday, but he'll definitely be hitting the line. And and I'm happy for you to take some of the $23 at Baggy Bet for the Caulfield Guineas in a few weeks' time. And Gabby, your best bet, please. Yeah, I'm going to go She's All Class each way. I thought, as I said previously, her last run was really, really good, and I think she could be back to her best. And if she is, she's going to be extremely competitive here, and she's gone close to Chain of Lightning with a much bigger weight. So I'm very, very happy with the $9.50 for her. And, Jack, you're declaring Chain of Lightning tomorrow? Yeah, it'll win. I think it's a really smart horse with on the way up. Done nothing wrong. Trust it. Enjoy it. Bring it, bring it home. Just wins. Uh, well, we need a big, big show, as we said. We've got um, a big weekend of racing, prelims in the AFL, semis in the NRL, um, racing Saturday and Sunday, plus the Brownlow Sunday night now. So a bit of punter's heaven this weekend. So if you haven't signed up to baggybet.com just yet, do so. Head over there now. Download the app. We've got some amazing specials on all over the weekend, the racing and in the sports. Baggybet.com. Download the app. Before we close the show, any final words, guys? Gabby, good to have you on for the first of many during this spring. No, thanks very much for having me. It's always an exciting time. I'm, I'm excited to get down and get amongst it for some of these big days. Obviously not going to be there Saturday, but uh, a couple in the future. Bring and Shane, Shane place. Where, where are you? Where are you betting this weekend? Or where aren't you betting is probably um, quicker. Where's uh, where's the uh, mybag.com service, the, the full curly? Where are you betting? Are you uh, going Pink, Ribbon, Pink Ribbon Cup Day is the Metropolitan meeting at the Gold Coast. Yep. Um, in stark contrast to the Caulfield card we just previewed, it's probably the lowest Metropolitan meeting I've seen this calendar year. That's a big call. Up there. But it's a great fundraising day, so everyone needs to support it in every way they can. Have your 50 cents each way, something, every race, uh, responsibly, of course. Also, the, big, the, the biggest thing for me, though, is the time-honoured ploughing cup at Dolby, which is the 1,400-metre maiden, which used to be the richest maiden in the country. Um, race has been run up for about 140 consecutive years or something, um, 140 years, whatever. Anyway, it's a 1,400 metre maiden worth about 7,000 now. Uh, that's at Dolby. <laughs> Picture race at Dolby on Saturday, which is a tab meeting. And we also have Gatton. So I'm into Woomba. Dolby's about 75, 80 k's sort of north, northwest. And Gatton's about 30 k's east. And we've got like 10 races at each place. And there's only about 12 jockeys. <laughs> um, so I don't know how, I don't know how we're going to go um, betting without like completely doing your brain in. Uh, so it's well worth the entry price if you just want to buy my stuff. Just buy it for this Saturday and bet Gatton and Dolby with me and enjoy and then, it. Deal my and pain. the boys over at the mailbag.com.au do offer a 24-hour pass now. So if you're, if you're a full sicko that just wants to have 100 bets and follow Chain in, sign <laughs> up to the full curly this on is, the 20. This Saturday is the day. For this it. Saturday's the day. Head head over to the store and um, get the twenty four hour pass and and follow Shane in with with betting everywhere in the country, places you've never responsibly, responsibly of course. And Jack, any last words from BaggyBet.com? Go Swans, go Paps, go Boys. Jack, I'm on. a Collingwood supporter. It's Jack E.I. this weekend, so some and animosity within the team. So big weekend of prelims. Um, as always, guys, sponsored by punningform.com.au. Through all the data is brought to you by. And if you haven't, head over to baggybet.com. Download the app. Get involved in all the fun. And as always, gamble responsibly. And we'll see you all again next week.